You ready to go? All right. You guys ready over there? Yep. There's a 3-2-1 countdown on the game itself, so whenever that you can follow that or I'll just count with it. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the audience, let's hear it for Seawolf and Braid. All right. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. This is Braid. Widely credited as one of the first indie games on Xbox Live Arcade to kind of use that distribution platform. Later ported to PS3 and PC and kind of grew from there. It's had a little bit of show here in the GDQs. Um, it's nice to get it in here one again, once again. And I uh, hope to guys give you guys a good show. So this first level here is pretty straightforward. It's just teaching you the basic mechanics. Obviously, there's a jump. It's a lot like Mario. Um, you land on guys' heads, they die, you bounce higher. Um, but the, end, the ultimate goal of the game here is to collect 60 puzzle pieces, assemble them, and then beat the game. Now here in this first level, ideally in world, this is world two, by the way. Ideally, I will never use the rewind button in this level. And there's also, you can see it right there, if, if I'm moving upwards at a certain frame, I can hit things that are above me. So kind of like Super Mario 3 in that same sense. Now, uh, you may notice that I'm jumping a lot, especially on downhills. There's a small speed boost given when you land on a downhill uh, platform or just like a hill in general. And then if you keep jumping, you preserve that speed a little bit longer. Same idea when you hit your head on a ceiling, right? That's sloped. Correct. That's, uh, that's considered a, hedge, uh, a head boost. And what I'm doing would just be like a hill boost. And it also works on ledges as well. Like rounded edges can be hit and you get a large boost as well. So I had to skip a couple pieces because it actually sequences out better to do it this way. I can get up a little faster and not have to slow down here. And so, yep, just kill all the guys, it shows up. Now I have two pieces that have little platforms on them, which allows me to actually get these two pieces. This is the first lateral puzzle in the game where you can, you actually use the puzzle itself that you're solving to have the game work. This is my personal favorite part of the game. <laughs> yeah. it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> We got that one, and then now we gotta just wait for him. Get this. Now, if some of you may more eagle-eyed people might have noticed there's an in-game timer in the top right. It does not run while I'm doing screen transitions or while I'm solving the puzzles. So that means that there's a bit of a discrepancy and I need to solve puzzles fast as possible, obviously, because we're doing RTA. Um, but all of our like leaderboards are tracked using the in-game timer. So a lot of my thresholds and like, well, I know if I'm having a good run are based on that. And world two here, a good time is sub three minutes. And a very good time is sub 257. And I think we might get that. Ooh, ah, so just close. barely. <laughs> now I need to solve this. Um, one of the things about the puzzles is that they do not snap in correctly very frequently and there's no real reason why. So you'll see me fumble around a lot because it just doesn't grab the pieces correctly or just doesn't snap even though it should. Now this world two, or world three, excuse me, it introduces us to the concept of green. So green pieces, keys, doors, etc. they don't, they get treated as if time never stops flowing. So any rewinds I do, I can die, it doesn't matter. They just keep flowing forward. And this is actually the most useful mechanic in the game for saving time because we can manipulate around stuff that doesn't, you know, we can freeze time while things are happening. Whereas, you know, otherwise I have to adjust for what changes. Um, now I was trying to do a little boost off that can and that's a good place to save some time, but any rounded edges, like you said, you can get a little boost. I do a jump there just to make the rewind a little better. I can get up there quicker. 
This is a little bit technical here. I can actually rewind underneath the platform, get up on top of it, grab this piece, and then hop back around. Oh. Get back on the platform, get a little boost, and I'm through. This game conserves momentum, right? Correct. So as long as you keep moving in the same direction, you'll keep going at a similar pace. Um, you can stop your momentum easily. Now, this is the first, I would call, glitch of the game right there. You're not supposed to be able to jump and get that piece. But ladders have a mechanic where you have nine frames of climbing, and then you can jump, and you'll get an extra height boost. So you can grab that piece without ever having to touch the puzzle behind it. And this is, there's only used three times in this level, or in the game, and it's two of them are in this level. Now you're supposed to set up uh, the cannons to hit each other, and you know you have to run down the hallway in time. But ladder jump just lets us skip all that. Uh, that bunny I just killed is incredibly important. If he is not dead, if I can't get out of this hole, I'm stuck down here. And the name of this level is irreversible for a reason. If I rewind too far too early, I can't finish the puzzle. Now, this whole time, uh, at the beginning, there was a platform moving to the left. And it's now going to be just getting close enough that I can get to that piece. I'm go for a little ledge boost here, and I got a little bit. So now we get to fight the first boss of the game. Bosses are ter is a term used loosely in Braid. They are not exactly difficult. Oh. You can grab that key from him if you get it exactly perfect, but it's very precise. So this guy is green, which means every time he gets hit, it stays hit. <laughs> then he drops a key. Ideally, you hit him four times the first time, and then you hit him once, and it, uh, the key falls right in front of the door. Now, this is the first really difficult puzzle, or, uh, strat in the game, and it saves about 50 seconds. And it requires some pretty precise rewinding. I can hop up on that platform, which is green. And since I was on a platform when I rewind, I can jump using the nine frame rule. Get that key, which lets me get to this door before this guy gets down, and I get that piece. And that was, like I said, that was one of the most precise tricks in the game. So, nice. <laughs> yeah. um, my target time on this level, World Two, is sub 7:40, ideally sub 7:35. So this nice. is a pretty good run so far. And we got another puzzle. If you want to do a donation, this is a good time. This puzzle yeah, takes I, me a little I, bit. I have a $100 donation from Patashu who says, Braid is one of my favorite games and speedruns. It's great to see Seawolf20 showing it off at the marathon. One question for the runner. Have you ever played any Braid custom levels such as Silver Braid or Nova? And if so, what's your favorite? I'm actually a really bad speedrunner in that case. I do not play the mods. I probably should, they're really fun, but I've kind of just focused on only this game. That's fair enough. All right, so now we're in World 4, which has my personal favorite mechanic in the game. Uh, time functions as an x-axis, so anything you do moving left and right moves time forward or backward. Which means, so if I move to the right, time flows forward. If I move to the left, time flows backwards. This also means that doors can't be opened from the right or they just lock again. Uh, it's another good time for a donation. This is a really boring level, this one. <laughs> All right. Um, I have... Uh, 
a $50 donation from Ridiculed, who says, don't you need anything this year for the same thing? This year, though, I've got one for our announcer. Puns about monorails always make for decent one-liners. Suplex that train. <laughs> I approve of that. So one of the things this level allows is enemies stay alive if you hit them moving to the left, which means you can bounce on an enemy forever and just keep gaining height and height and height till you hit the maximum height, which is usually on three bounces. So one of the so what you can do here is just gain enough height so you can gain up this ladder and you're back. This is also useful right here. Now this is another very precise trick. I have to make this bunny move in a very specific way. And I have to hit him right on his nose while moving to the left to keep him alive. It's easier to just set up again if you miss it. That should do it. I get above him, and I can just bypass this key <laughs> nice. and grab that piece. If that trick's not called the bunny hop. Oh. It, is, it is called the bunny hop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bunny hop or bunny skip. So this is another one of those puzzles where you have to have the little guy get a key from a hatch. And actually what I do is I freeze time to make my rewind take less long. It's small optimization, but it does a everything adds up. So I can just fast forward and I'm back here with a key. And there's a little bit of leeway here because you can't beat the cycle that that guy was on. So you have a little bit of leeway on this puzzle. Whereas a lot of other stuff is green, you don't have any leeway. And then this next level here is my favorite one in the game, best design level. It uses a non-green key, which means that the key goes backwards with you at the level it was on. So like if I walked back to the left, I would lose the key. So I cannot move left in this level or I'm in bad shape. And since I open the door and just fast forward back to it, it opens back up. And this is, I think my, my target time is about 11.10 on World 4, so we lost a little time there, but not too much. This is still pretty good. And we just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and we're puzzled. Uh, another donation if you got one. All right, I have. One from Athena Bear, $5, that says, Second year watching, I don't regret it one part. This is my favorite bit of summer. Keep it up. And I have uh, $5 from Socrates Forever. This is, What kind of storm is always in a rush? A hurricane. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Are those puzzles always in the, in the same orientation? So they can be different based on what you do during the level and especially where you place puzzle pieces. So like when I solve a puzzle preemptively, it puts the puzzle pieces that I get later in different spots. And this will come up later in World 6 and I'll talk about it then. Um, so this is World 5. Um, it gives us the pink mechanic, which is shadows. So everything I do when I rewind, my shadow goes and does it as if I did it. So I can manipulate anything that's pink with my shadow. So this key here is pink, so my shadow can just jump across and deliver it to me. Thanks, shadow. And then this little bunny here is likes to chase after shadows as well, which lets me sneak behind him. And this is actually one of the few levels that there's actually a difference between Xbox and every other version. In Xbox, you can hop on top of that bunny, like from below the le like underneath, and you just bypass doing the entire part where you make him sit to the left. Now this is one of the more technical levels. It features the hardest ledge jump or uh, ladder jump here. This has to be, I think, like uh, nearly frame perfect. There we go. Okay. And 
And ideally, you just tap rewind three times on that level, but because the ladder jump is so precise, it, it just happens that you don't. And this is where we learn that shadow keys open shadow doors as well. And then you can see this is sloped upward, so I get head boosts every time I jump into that. Um, get time for a donation here. This puzzle is pretty right. long. Takes a while. We actually have uh, a pawn, well, another pawn, but this one is very specific to this game. It is a two hundred and one and sixty dollar, no, two hundred and one dollar and sixty cents even anonymous donation. It says this is the first GD key I've ever seen live, but it's been fantastic. Braid, it's about time. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. That was a good one. That's, that's a good one. Good. That I, I, good. I give props to that. You, you win this round. Yes. <laughs> All right. So here's boss number two. Don't blink. <laughs> you got to hit him with the shadow chandeliers, right? Yep. Three shadow chandeliers and then two, two regular chandeliers, and he's dead. This one actually features a puzzle. The other one, you just finish. So I have to open, I hit that little lever and it raises this platform over here and I get the piece. And this is the puzzle. This puzzle actually got me my first time through for a long time. There's a conservation of momentum, momentum in the shadow. So if you just jump with a shadow, it keeps moving as if you never stopped pressing forward. More puzzle solving. More puzzle solving. This one's also pretty annoying. Ugh, come on. Not, not locking together. Nope. All right, now this is world six. This is where the, the run can f is, is made or broken. Um, in this level, we get a mechanic. We get to drop a little ring, and it slows down time around it. So the closer you get to the ring, the more time is slowed down. And basically every level except this one has very precise tricks in it. Um, the only time that I ask for really serious time is, is coming up in two levels, where everything is nearly frame perfect. This is, uh, remember in the World 2 we did phase. This is just phase slightly different. Get there, all right. All right, this is Cascade, v very difficult. Okay. Now this, the ring has to be placed in the, yep, that's the best frame, or the best pixel. And then we can get in here. And then we have to do a measured out here. We have to do, that'll work. I have to get over this flame perfectly and I can't lose momentum. There we go. I can get over it there. Nice. And then finally, I have to do another trick. Oh. There we go. All right. Nice. That's Cascade. I would bet I have lost multiple world record uh, runs that were ahead of world record on this level. It is far and away the hardest level in the game. So this one I have to pause time for about three tenths of a second to start, three to four tenths. 
And what I'm doing is I'm manipulating off-screen green objects. And what'll happen if I got it, yep, he came out. And then I have to do, there we go. So you can actually use the fact that he's green to bounce on top of him while you're below him. We're going to try this. This is really tough. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and then the mother of all edge boosts. Ah, oh, shucks. Yeah. Close. And I do this um, later. I will get pieces. Um, if I do this and put these in the correct spots already, I will get um, the pieces will fall into spots where they're really fast to finish later. So it's more of an RTA strat. There's not a lot of RTA strats. Now this is the, the level where we get the, the most impressive mechanic. It's the green platform that grants you green status. So when I'm on this platform, time does not move forward for me. So, and I'm also green for a little while longer as well. Ah, there it is, okay. So I actually rewind time while I'm moving and it lets me get through that spot without having to slow anything down. And this also opens a mechanic where things I do and I fat, like I rewind and fast forward, they happen even though I'm not there. Actually, we're gonna have to reset this, that's not good. There we go. Can I break in with a quick donation? Sure. I have a $1,000 donation. Wow. Yeah. Nice. From DJW, who merely says, I'm enjoying this break speed run. Thank you for this wonderful event. Thank you, DJW. So because I just fast forwarded everything I did, the key gets pushed through the platform. And now I just walk up to this piece here. I can rewind back to the green platform, fast forward, and there's my piece. So the green platform allows you to do all sorts of time saving. And then this is a very, this trick has the only glitch in the game where sometimes the green status will wear off prematurely and there's not much you can do except just keep trying till it stops happening. So hopefully we don't have it happen. We gotta get there on time. Hey, all right, first try. Yeah. And not one of those helpful glitches. No, this is not <laughs> a helpful glitch. There's not a lot of glitches in this game, and that is definitely a bad one. So my target time leaving this is usually 2030. So this is actually a really good run. I'm, I'm happy with where we are right now. 2052 is good coming out of World Six. And then we have, we just snap these into place. And now we go, like every good game, you do world one last. <laughs> I have a quick $100 donation from DDR Coder. He says, I'm so hyped to see Braids played so well. It is such an amazing game. And this, this level is a little, they didn't do much with this level. It was kind of a, I think it was kind of a throw in just to get to the last, you know, the very last level. So it's all backwards. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. And so you can prevent things from dying by hitting them as they come up. <laughs> Doesn't make a lot of sense. Isn't really fleshed out, but we're also not here very long. Now, this is kind of where the story, this is where Braid was always great, is the story was, was really good. And this is the, you know, we're supposed to be chasing a princess and, you know, the object of our affection. Traditional video game trope. Um, but time is actually flowing backwards, so I won't spoil it too much, but things are not as they seem.
Now this beginning part you don't technically have to do as fast as possible, but everything after this very slow drawbridge needs to be pretty much perfect. So, but we save about 50 seconds doing it this way. So this is very, very necessary for a good spree run. All right. First try. Nice. nice. Good boost. Oh, head boost. That'll work. <laughs> so what this lets us do is we can get on this guy a little early, get this lever. The princess is way ahead of where she's supposed to be. And we can actually beat this plant from coming up. Now you're supposed to have to get a bunch of secrets to be able to do that. But we go ahead and do this. Now there is a risk of soft lock here if I screw up. So we're just gonna hope that I don't screw up. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. We got it. All right, nice. hey! Now um, I'm gonna do, each of these levers can be done three times. So I'm gonna donate $20 for every one I get three times. There's one. One. Damn it. <laughs> and there's, I believe there's nine levers here coming, so. Ugh. Okay, we'll do it $20 for everyone I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And when you are done lever shifting, I have a donation. I was Go for it. For me. The epilogue's okay. 40 seconds, so. So, uh, like right now? Yep, go ahead. All right. Uh, this is from Agent Talon, who donates $125 and says, Seawolf20, you are blowing my mind right now. Didn't even know that some of those skips were possible. This was, and still is, one of my favorite games and platformers that I have ever played. So excited that I finally got to catch one of these live, and I hope to visit one in the future. I just got done working 48 hours in the past four days, so I consider this a well-deserved break. I am more than happy to pass on that extra money that I made from it to such an amazing cause. Ty was one of my first GameCube games. Time in three seconds. Time. Nice. Um, only four people have ever gotten sub-24. That's actually only 10 seconds from my PB. Awesome. So that, wow. was, that was a really good run. Yeah. I'm, I'm, nice. I'm really happy with that. What was my RTA? Uh, 27 minutes, 12 seconds. That's a world record for RTA. Wow. World record RTA, ladies and gentlemen. Nice job. Awesome. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> cool. So how does that feel? That feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually soft logged right before... Yeah, that, my my practice run right before this, I soft locked at the end. So I was a little nervous. Yeah, I was a little scary. Nice job. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you to Jay Coper and Gregor Tixelkins for sitting on the couch. And uh, thank you for the everybody else, all the people running it, and uh, Doctors Without Borders. And ladies and gentlemen, Seawolf20. All right, uh, it has been awesome hosting for you guys. I appreciate all the puns that you donated. I'm looking forward to hearing more later in the, the week, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to High Def Low Main, uh, and he will take it from here.
All right, everybody, thanks for uh, sticking with us. Uh, we've got uh, Contra 3 with uh, Drifter 18 coming up. Uh, first, though, we're going to run an ad from SavePoint. SavePoint is a uh, company that uh, provides arcade and pinball machines. Uh, you can buy, sell, and rent them. Uh, they also buy, sell, and trade video games and imports. They've provided, I'd say, probably ooh, 20 or so arcade cabinets plus about a half dozen pinball tables uh, for, uh, for uh, all of the attendees here at Summer Games Done Quick. Uh, it's been a real blast, and uh, we want to thank you. Their website is www.savepointreloaded.com. Uh, we're also going to go to one more ad from... Power Up Audio. Everybody, welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2016.